Oh, well, uh, first, thank you for um, organizing this. Um, this panel, I think it's, it's so interesting to talk about um, intellectual property rights and copyright um, outside the typical uh, venues or outside the typical uh, means of discussion. And for us, like an organization, um, I mean, in this venue, package of all scholars and academy, for uh, ours uh, uh, as an organization, it's a privilege to, to, to speak with, with you about uh, uh, what, uh, what are the work uh, are we doing in, in this field. Well, um, I want to uh, present uh, this presentation. Uh, it's, uh, I want to present one thing, that, that is um, a work that we are doing. Uh, we were doing in the last um, in the last year. That is uh, these principles: uh, principles on freedom of expression and copyright in the digital age. Uh, Article 19, as an uh, international organization, uh, has a long tradition to make these principles on, on specific issues. Uh, among the most famous is the Camden principles on hate speech and uh, freedom of expression. And the work we do is uh, in, the, in the international arena, in the international policy arena, we work with uh, United Nations and governments and, uh, academy, uh, and academia and um, all the key actors to endorse these principles. And we, with the years, we, we we, we have really successful to to put the the right framework on the discussion. Well, uh, but before uh, 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 presenting you the these principles, um, I want to to give you a little introduction on uh, on this and how how uh, how. how what are our conclusions or uh, the study of the international law and why uh, we decided to do this instead of another thing. Um, well, um, the potential conflict between free expression and intellectual property is not new. Since the intervention of the printing press, those with financial stake in the dissemination of intellectual works and ideas have sought legal protection for their interests. Traditionally, intellectual property law has sought to strike a balance between those interests. For example, the rights of creators and other right holders in creative property on one hand, and on the other hand, the public's right to, of access to those works. And at its core, intellectual property law seeks to promote creativity. Historically, therefore, intellectual property protection was limited in duration and scope. By the same token, the free flow of information and ideas was also protected, among other things, by making them available in the public domain. However, the creative industries have obtained over time increasing powers over intellectual works and their use in a number of ways, including the extension of copyright terms. Against this background, the Internet has been perceived by many in these industries as a disruptive force. Indeed, not unlike the VCR or cassette recorder before it, the Internet raises significant challenges for copyright holders by allowing the easy copying and spread content. In particular, one of the most efficient technologies of the Internet, peer-to-peer, -peer, file sharing, has enabled at the sharing of content on a scale ever before imagined. Unsurprisingly, the response of the creative industries has been to label these activities as plain theft. For in Lord Mansfield's words, a person may use the copy by playing it, but he has no right to rob the author of profit by multiplying copies and disposing of them for his own use. The entertainment industry's argument is a straightforward. Creative property is just as real as physical property and therefore must attract the same protection. The superficial appeal of this argument has found support in both the parliaments and courts. As a consequence of this, policymakers uh, have been only too ready to support and adopt increasingly more stringent 
measures against the misuse and abuse of intellectual property online. What is frequently less greatly appreciated, however, is the impact of, that these measures have on the internet itself, and in particular, the ability to exchange information and ideas. More and more states, for instance, have begun to adopt laws uh, requiring internet service providers to disconnect their subscribers from the internet if they are not found to engage in copyright infringement. Similarly, websites alleged to engage in such practices are routinely taken down, uh, taken down without as much as a court hearing. Even where such hearings take place, the courts uphold the rights of copyright holders in the vast majority of cases. There is more. Previously, ordinary behavior such as borrowing books and CDs for no profit can now prevent it through the use of digital rights management system by the creative industry to protect the rights. In some countries, circumventing these digital laws is criminalized. <laughs> Similarly, Given a way legally obtaining material could now potentially expose to criminal sanctions if they are in digital form. With a repeated ex extension of copyright terms, the public domain is shrinking to the point that most 20th century works would not be freely available without permission from copyright holders before a great many years to come. And one, uh, and one can expect that the creative industries will come back for more. In all the debates so far, however, freedom of expression has been conspicuous by its absence. All too often, its importance has been sidelined or ignored. The extent that it's mentioned, it is typical as assumed within one of the narrow exceptions provided by intellectual property law. Uh, for example, notions of fair use and fair dealing. In this way, IP law distorts and outplays the importance of freedom of expression. Freedom of expression is, however, too important to be left to the margins of the, a debate about how best to enforce property rights. On the contrary, freedom of expression is central to the, et it is central to the ethos of the Internet, underpinning its free flow of information and ideas. <coughs> it is therefore necessary uh, for those concerned with defending freedom of expression to address the ever-expanding scope of intellectual property rights and increasingly drastic measures taken to enforce them. The very debate must be reframed. Um, this investigation that you can consult in the, in the, in, in, in the, in the web page looks at some of the main issues that rise uh, that the rise in balancing freedom of expression and intellectual property rights, especially copyright. The reason for this is that the battle of the free flow of information and the sharing of culture has mainly taken place in the copyright arena. We have retained the term intellectual property rights, however, because human rights law, law generally refers to intellectual property rights rather than their more specific subsets, namely copyright, patents, and trademarks. It, is, it, it also better captures the policy debates currently taking place around the world about intellectual property uh, enforcement. Ultimately, and this is the core of the presentation, our intention uh, with this paper is to lay the ground work for the elaboration with a group of international recognized experts in the fields of human rights, digital rights, and intellectual property law, of principles on the proper balance to be struck between freedom of expression and intellectual property rights. The principles set out a framework to ensure freedom of expression and the ability to share knowledge and culture are fully protected and not unduly restricted by copyright interest in the digital age. The principles also seek to promote positive measures to foster the free flow of information and ideas and greater access to knowledge and uh, culture on the internet and beyond. Um, to say this, um, I want to, uh, to present these principles because uh, we want to work this year, uh, beginning in March, uh, to um, be of active, uh, an activists in the world to 
present this to governments and uh, academics and NGOs to endorse these principles. Uh, so, I want to. Uh, the principles are um, divided in um, five, five, six sections. Um, I don't know how to do a little. Uh, Ah. Well, there are six sections of uh, the principles that are divided uh, like this. The general principles, the protection of the public domain, the copyright exceptions, uh, freedom of expression and copyright enforcement in the digital environment, measures promoting access to knowledge and culture, and transparency and accountability in copyright policy making. Uh, when we uh, imagine uh, how the principles uh, will be, we uh, um, study all the all the angles of the discussion of, of intellectual property rights versus human rights uh, in the world of, that are currently uh, in in the public debate, and we think this is the best. Uh, um, so yes, this is the, um, the principles, and uh, our first key actor to endorse this is the Mexican government, and I think uh, it will be a, a, a very a huge work because uh, they are now negotiating the TPP and ACTA and all that stuff, and well, this uh, our main key actor today is to make uh, Mexican state to endorse this. And uh, it, it is uh, written in the very clear and like a like a law. Uh, well, we are all lawyers. Uh, uh, like a law and clear to to make uh, more usable. Uh, the the first uh, section of the general principles is uh, the definition of the freedom of expression. Uh, because we think uh, by defining right, I mean freedom of expression uh, means the same in the internet and outside the internet as the joint declaration of uh, human rights uh, of, of internet and freedom of expression said. And uh, we uh, take that uh, work of joint declaration of Langer rule and the other uh, special rapporteurs of freedom of expression that we as an organization uh, lead that discussion and that joint declaration and uh, I mean uh, the, the, the thing that is uh, more interesting to me uh, is the 1.4 uh, that is um, no, no restriction of freedom of expression on the ground of protection of the uh, right of others including copyright may be imposed unless the state can demonstrate that the restriction is prescribed by law and it's necessary in a democratic society to protect those interests. The burden of demonstrating the validity of the restriction rest, rests with the state. And uh, prescribed by law means that the law must be accessible, unambiguous, ground narrowly, and with sufficient precision, so as it enable individuals to foresee whether the, a particular action is unlawful. B, the law should provide for sufficient safeguards against abuse, including prompt, full, and effective scrutiny of the validity of the restriction by an independent court, tribunal, or, or other independent adjudic adjudicatory body as an aspect of the rules law. C. Any restriction of freedom of expression that the state seeks to justify and grant the protection of copyright interests must have the genuine purpose to demonstrate effect on the basis of independent evidence of protecting the ends that copyright seeks to achieve and express it in the preamble. D. The restriction of freedom of expression is proportionate in a democratic society only if it is at least restrictive means available for protecting that interest and two, the restriction is compatible with democratic principles. And 1.5, the state must not only refrain from interfering with freedom of expression, but are also under a positive obligation to protect freedom of expression 
from interference by private parties. In the, uh, I think the, the, in the definition of copyright, we have, uh, we have a lot of discussion. And when we are doing these principles, we already had because um, uh, it is uh, a little complicated. Or the, the schools of, of thinking about this, or the academic, um, are maybe not in uh, in accordance. But this, this it is the copyright is an exclusive, transferable right given to a creator for a mix, fixed number of years to copy, print, publish, perform, film, record, or otherwise control the use of literary, musical, dramatic, or artistic works. Rights related to the copyright subsist, among other things, in films, sounds, recording, broadcasts, and written works. Copyright does not protect ideas or information, but rather their expression provided as such expression reaches a certain threshold of originality as regards literary, musical, dramatic, and artistic works. Copyright enjoys limited protection under international human rights law as part of the rights uh, of property. Like the right to property itself, it is not an absolute right. In particular, states may enforce such laws as they deem necessary to control the use of property, including copyright, in accordance to with the general interest or to secure the payment of taxes in order to contribute payments. Uh, this is interesting because um, when when we are reading this, we look at the, the European Court of Human Rights uh, decisions on property rights, particular property rights. And if you see the, the paper uh, of, uh, I sent, we divided property rights and intellectual property rights, and we, we argument that, that the intellectual property right as a definition is not, is not like, not, it's not think like intellectual property. So uh, we, we look at the case, the Pale versus France. Um, in this case, uh, the court, um, uh, uh, the court uh, uh, take this man in France to demolish his house uh, in order to uh, because uh, it, it, is, it was blocked the access to seashore and the court says um, uh, the, uh, the seashore uh, it, it needs to be a public area open to all and the argument is uh, about the public interest. I mean, the, the seashore versus the property rights, physical property rights of the, this man with this house, uh, antique house, and the court order to demolish the house in, in, in order to maintain the, uh, the public interest of all to access to seashore. Uh, so that's why we put uh, the, the scope of the, of, the, of the frame that we uh, choose was a property right. Um, well, then, uh, it's uh, the principles of interpretation, because in this uh, theme, I think, if we can provide this principle to the courts, it is important to uh, also provide them an, an tool for interpretation about uh, uh, the side of balance between human rights and uh, intellectual property rights. So uh, the first one is the, the most important to me, freedom of expression and copyright are complementary in as much as the purpose of copyright is the promotion of literary, musical, and artistic creativity, the enrichment of cultural heritage and dissemination of knowledge and information goods to the general public. In determining whether a restriction on freedom of expression based on copyright grounds is justified, the following factors must be taken into account. And we put a uh, 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 five um, elements to, to take into account in the, when someone is interpret, interpreting the laws uh, that, that clash copyright and freedom of expression. Um, a, the discretion of order to the states is imposing restrictions of freedom of expression is narrower 
than that granted in the respect of restriction on property rights, including copyright. B, limitations on copyright, including fair dealing. Um, fair dealing must be interpreted broadly so as to give meaningful effect to the right of freedom of expression and information. C, digital copies of a work are non trivial goods. D, if a cultural good are downloaded online in breach of copyright, the lack of laws will have a level availability of those goods within that just jurisdiction shall be a relevant factor in determining any remedies for the copyright holder against such an authorized use of cultural goods. And E, the impact of the restriction on the right of freedom of expression must be carefully scrutinized. Well, I, 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 I can use all my time and all your time to do this, but uh, um, as I know, uh, you will receive a copy of these principles, and hopefully, for us as an organization, we can discuss further uh, this, these principles, and uh, they are open to comments uh, of all of you until March, and then we will uh, launch a big campaign, a worldwide campaign, to take them to the uh, WIPO and governments and uh, all, and hopefully for me, for us, it will be very important to uh, to hear your comments on, on this, because it was really, really hard.